Thank you, Dad. We're here in Dhaka on this special edition of India Business Hour, and I'm joined now by one of the celebrated entrepreneurs here in Dhaka, who also happens to be a woman. Uh, thanks very much, Ms. Huck, for joining us on CNBC TV 18. Of course, she runs a diversified conglomerate from real estate to power generation, media, information technology, and garments. So let me start by asking you about the garment business, because after China, Bangladesh is the second largest exporter of ready-made garments. How easy or difficult has it been and you've been in this business in Bangladesh for 20 years how competitive is it it's very competitive it's actually pleasantly competitive because it's the drive that makes us better every day mm -hmm. there's a lot of competition but there's also a lot of opportunities a lot of business is being diverted from China from India and we are benefiting from that why is that is it because it's cheaper here in in uh, Bangladesh let's just say that we are the best <laughs> at what we do and uh, garments has obviously been our core industry for a long time for almost three decades so we've mastered this art of production so therefore you know Chinese um, are getting more expensive um, India of course offers a lot of value addition to their products uh, but then you know we're um, sort of now also graduating to the next level mm -hmm. of efficiency and productivity so hopefully you know we we will uh, end up being the best and uh, also because we have a unique advantage of being assessed very critically right mm -hmm. now our structural integrity is being examined critically so is our electric um, and, and fire um, criteria so therefore we are getting better even with our setups so after all of this is done, after all the remediation is done, um, hopefully, you know, Bangladesh will come out to be the single most compliant manufacturing hub of the world. You know, I want to talk about manufacturing uh, beyond just garments and uh, talk about the Bangladesh story. It's an economy that's grown at an average of about 6% over the last few years. Uh, and the government is confident of being able to achieve an 8% number at the end of the current five-year plan. Uh, do you really feel that there is enough levers being exercised at this point in time to really give manufacturing a big boost outside of the sectors that you're present in, which have traditionally been the strong sectors? Um, you see, RMG has been uh, growing at an indomitable speed. And you know, when we started off first, the government did offer initial support you know, we had the bonded warehouse facility, we had LCs, so automatically the business grew. While we grew along the way, there were traditional markets that we used to export to a lot. But then again, there came the, uh, the post-MFA phase out, you know, where there was no quota. So we all thought that we would die at one point. But then there came the EU Everything But Arms initiative. So we were allowed entry duty-free. EU, so which was around 12.5%, automatically we became competitive and ever since 2006 we have absolutely taken a leap. Mm -hmm. um, of course garments, um, currently you know, we could do with a lot of support, but um, it's, it's tough being in business, but also like it's pleasantly challenging. As far as other sectors go, you know, government has of course singled out agriculture mm -hmm. as a thrust sector. So automatically, you know, we are hoping that that's also going to grow. And as you attended today's um, panel discussion, uh, the, the finance minister's uh, focus is completely on agriculture. Yes. And, and the planning minister thinks that, you know, we will become a rural Bangladesh in no time. But then again, you know, um, we also have to acknowledge the fact that in over uh, 25 years, the shift has been from agronomy to completely manufacturing. Right. So I don't see many other sectors offering the opportunity because Bangladesh also faces a literacy challenge. Right. You know, RMG is the only sector where we can grow effortlessly, literally. And, and for those of you who are wondering what RMG is, it's ready-made ready -made garment. garment but, but I want to ask you specifically about the success story of Bangladesh in really improving the participation of women in the workforce. Uh, over the past decade or so, from 7 million now to 17 million women have joined the workforce. A lot of them employed by your sector, over 3 million employed by 3 the 3.5 million employed by your sector alone. Mm -hmm. What is it that makes it work? Well, you know, sewing is inherently a, a female thing anyway. So, you know, I think our female sewers are, are great at what they do. Uh, actually, there's a statistics that if there's 1% increase in sales, that increases 
0.04% uh, demand of female labor in mm -hmm. the sector. Mm -hmm. So that's very assuring, you see. Um, and women participation, as you know, almost 27% of GDP is lost because of lack of utilization of female labor force. So that certainly does not happen in Bangladesh. And as time goes by, we are seeing more and more recruitment of female labor in, in our sector. And also because they're more stable, mm -hmm. they don't quit jobs. They don't, uh, except for the maternity leave, honestly, I mean, we've had great female workers. And also, they're very diligent. So while we talk about female workers being at a, a just a sewing level, we are also getting to the supervisory levels. Mm -hmm. So there is a shift. It's not as if, you know, women are staying where they are. There is, of course, a lot of, uh, there are lots of hiccups. And, and women are still struggling. But then again, you know, even by being a female entrepreneur and being in a bubble also, even I have to break the glass, ce the glass yeah. ceiling most of the time. So think about uh, the women out there. But then again, South Asia is uniquely, you know, we have at least one million workforce, young workforce entering the labor market yeah. every, every month. So, you know, we have to make scope for, uh, for the women, of course. So, so, so let me end by asking you, uh, you know, the government is very clearly betting on this being the transformation phase for Bangladesh. That's what everyone's talking about from the finance minister to the prime minister. Uh, what do you think gives you the confidence that this is really going to be the next big leap as far as Bangladesh is concerned? Well, as far as I'm concerned, very selfishly, I'll sing praises of the private sector. I think it's, uh, it's the relentless spirit of the private sector that doesn't give up. I think the sector um, engages in what they do with utmost passion. So no matter what comes our way, we are resilient and we work through our challenges. So I think it's faith in ourselves that basically bring us up to speed. And I think it's faith that will drive Bangladesh forward. Well, Rubana Haq, thanks very much for joining us on India Business Hour. We wish you all the very best with your plans, and not just in the ready-made garment business, but outside of that as well. And more power to women like you. Thanks very much for joining Thank us. You.